Hi, I'm Daniel Andrews, owner and creator of AndrewsFootball.com. And for a reveal, uh, I'm going to do another video showing the number one Super Bowl team of all time. I want to give some honorable mentions out because there are several teams that I didn't put on my list as top 10 teams, but they're really great teams. I feel like uh, you should, shouldn't really overlook in the history book teams that are great but didn't quite make my uh, top 10 list. Uh, first honorable mention I want to give a shout out to is the 93 Dallas Cowboys. When I first made this list, I really wanted to put the 93 Cowboys on there. I really wanted the team from each dynasty on there. And of all the teams uh, the Dallas Cowboys have, the 93 teams, the team I really liked, I really wanted to put on there. Uh, this was a great team. They were number two in the league in scoring. Uh, number two defense in scoring. Uh, this is a team that even though they started off 0-2, that was before Emmitt Smith signed. Remember, he was holding out for a lot of money. Then when he signed, he was NFL MVP, Super Bowl MVP. But if you want to see one of the all-time greatest performances, the last game of the season, they traveled to New York. The winner gets home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Emmitt Smith, 32 carries, 168 yards, 10 catches, 61 yards, and a touchdown. Oh, yeah, he separated his shoulder earlier in the game. Still has 42 touches. Um, if I make the list, Emmett Smith would be the best running back on the list. Now, is he a better running back than Walter Payton? No, absolutely not. But Walter Payton, that was year 11 for Walter Payton. This is Emmett Smith in his prime. Uh, ultimately, though, when I look at this team, uh, they do have Charles Haley as, as a Hall of Famer on defense. Of course, they got the triplets on offense. Uh, this is a team that as much as I like them, I don't think they're as good as, as the 84 49ers on defense. You got three pro bowlers on offense. You got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, I mean, they got a lot of talent on offense, not so much on defense. Um, a really good returner. It's like splitting hairs, but ultimately I see the 84 49ers give me Montana over Aikman. Uh, this was a really good running defense. Uh, I think it would have been close, but uh, I'm, I'm just taking a wash over Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson deserves to be in Hall of Fame. He's not in the Hall of Fame. Uh, is he as good as Bill Walsh? I'm going to say no. So give me Montana. Give me Walsh. Uh, it, it's really close, but ultimately, uh, if I was doing this list and I was doing maybe 11, 93 Cowboys is a good chance that they're 11. Another team, another Dallas team was a Super Bowl uh, six winner, and, and that's Dallas Cowboys. If you know your history, the Dallas Cowboys kept coming up short, kept coming up short. They lost Super Bowl five, uh, something called the Blunder Bowl to the Baltimore Colts. That was the first year the AFL and NFL merged and became the AFC and the NFC. Uh, the Baltimore Colts, a former NFL team, lost Super Bowl three. They came back in five, won the Super Bowl. Dallas Cowboys came back and won the Super Bowl. Uh, this, this Dallas Cowboys team really deserves a special mention. They were number one in the league in scoring. They are seventh in, in the league against points against a, a, a litany of Hall of Famers. Uh, of course, you have Tex Ram. Uh, of course, you got, um, oh, wow, I can't believe I almost forgot here, uh, Tom Landry. Uh, you got those two guys. Now, they're not players, of course. Um, you have Roger Stallback, Pro Football Hall of Fame, of course. But, Here's, here's the thing. You have Bob Hayes, Pro Football Hall of Fame. These two guys deserve it. Bob Lilly, Pro Football Hall of Fame. He deserves it. But you have Herb Adderley, Mike Ditka, and, and Lance Allworth. Now, Mike Ditka was going to retire for the Cowboys. Ask him to come. Uh, he wasn't a starter. He had 30 catches, 360 yards, and a touchdown. Of course, he did have a touchdown in the Super Bowl. Roger Stallback famously acknowledged that without Ditka, they don't win a Super Bowl. Uh Herb Adderley, uh, a first-team All-Pro for uh, five years, deserves to be in the Pro Football Fame. However, his last Pro Bowl was in 67. They played this in 71. Uh, the last three years of his career was with Dallas. He, even though he isn't a Pro Football Hall of Fame, he wasn't a Pro Bowl player, not really a great player. He did have six interceptions. Yeah, not that is correct, six interceptions. Um, uh, and then, of course, there's Bambi, Lance Allworth, uh, if you look at some of our statistics back then, it's mind-boggling, but here's he started 11 games for the Dallas Cowboys team, 34 catches, 487 yards, two touchdowns. When I look at Adderley, Allworth, and Ditka, I'm not really seeing Hall of Fame caliber players. I'm seeing guys that made a Hall of Fame on different teams, had Hall of Fame careers on different teams. They're here 
kind of kind of grasping on to uh, trying to win a ring. Kudos to them for doing that. This was a great team. Uh, I really couldn't tell you which one would win between 93 and the 71. Uh, give me Stallback over Aikman. I, I like the 71 defense better, but are they good enough to contain Emmett Smith and, and all those pro bowlers? It's really hard for me to say. Um, both these teams could tie for 11th. I don't see a way that either one of these teams beats the 84 49ers. So, well, and also I considered 77 Cowboys, which traded up. Uh, for Tony Dorsett, and keep in mind Stallback's still in that team. That's a great Super Bowl team. Uh, however, uh, the defense was eighth with 15.1 points a game. The offense was talented, only scored 24.6 points a game, which is five, uh, 5.7 points, I'm sorry, 4.7 points less than the 71 Cowboys, which led the league in scoring. So I, I really felt like even though I looked at the 77 Cowboys, I, I really didn't think, even with the addition of Dorsett, the defense wasn't great. The defense was better on the 71. Out of all the Super Bowl teams, I think the 77 Cowboys was the weakest. I wouldn't even consider them for a top 10. Uh, one Another team that I really wanted to put on this list, I had them on the list, first in the league in scoring on offense and defense. Uh, and one of the all-time greatest coaching staff is, is uh, 96 Packers. Of course, Andy Reid was a member of this coaching staff. They also have future head coaches Marty Morningwig and Todd Bowles. So you have three. Oh, Doug Peterson's on this coaching. Well, he's not on coaching. If he's a player, so you got a uh, you know, future uh, Hall. Of, or I'm sorry, a future Super Bowl winning. A coach as a third-string quarterback. I, I think he was third-string. Jim McMahon was also on the team. I didn't go into the depth chart. Jim McMahon did take a kneel down in this game, so um, I'm going to assume Peterson was third-string. I'm not really sure how that correlates into this, but uh, the problem is with the 96 Packers is that this was a really, really good team. Uh, Keith Jackson Keith Jackson and Sean Jones retired after this game. Sean Jones played opposite of Reggie White. Sean Jones is a really, really good football player. He wasn't a Pro Bowl player at this time. Uh, he was 34. Like I said, retired right afterwards. Keith Jackson, he was a great player. Not going into the Hall of Fame, but he had Hall of Fame potential. A really, really good athlete. Only started four games, so he had 10 touchdowns, went to the Pro Bowl. Big part of this team. He retired after this game. Desmond Howard, who did not go to the Pro Bowl despite returning three punts for touchdowns, 15.1 yards per punt return. How he didn't go to Pro Bowl, I don't know. Uh, returned a punt against San Francisco in the playoffs, and then, of course, returned the kickoff for a touchdown winning uh, Super Bowl MVP. Deserved to win Super Bowl MVP. He left for big money and was very public that he completely regretted it because his career, uh, the best time in his career was that one year in Green Bay. Uh, th this team, I, I really wanted to put on the list, but here's the thing. Andy Reid, Martin Morningwig, Todd Bowles, the, these were all assistant coaches. They weren't even coordinators. Fritz Shermer and Sherman Lewis were uh, offensive and defensive coordinators. Neither one of them became head coaches. And another thing about this team was that they could never beat the Dallas Cowboys. They even lost to Dallas during the regular season. Dallas lost to Carolina in the playoffs. Michael Irvin got injured in the first quarter. He was out for the whole game. Really changed the dimension of the game. With a healthy Mike, Michael Irvin, do they beat Carolina? I think so. Then, can Green Bay beat Dallas? That's the whole thing. Is they, the previous three years, they lost to Dallas every single year. Even though they had the home field advantage, could they beat Dallas in Green Bay? That's the whole thing. You don't know because Mike Orvin gets hurt. It's by injury. And then uh, really the best team in the AFC was the Denver Broncos. For those of you that, that remember this, Jacksonville just caught fire. They were 4-7, and seven, won the last five games, snuck into the playoffs, beat Buffalo at home, which was no small feat because Buffalo went to the previous four Super Bowls. Beating Buffalo in the playoffs in Buffalo was something considered impossible, especially a team from Florida. Then they go to Denver, played arguably the best team. They beat Denver in the playoffs. Why is this important? Because the next year, Denver and Green Bay play. Denver wins. So how much does that have to do with it? Well, if you're talking the greatest teams of all time, shouldn't the greatest team of all time be able to win again? Yeah, I know they had some players retire, but 
you know. Uh, here's another thing, though. When I bring them up against 90, uh, I'm sorry, the 84-49ers, Montana over Favre. I love me some Favre. I love Favre. Is he a better quarterback than Joe Montana in Super Bowls? No. Coaching staff, give me Walsh over Holmgren. All right, I can't count Andy Reid on this because Andy Reid is a, a tight ends and assistant offensive line coach. He's not a coordinator, so I can't really count Andy Reid in that. Pro Bowl players, 84-49ers got 10. This team has four. And here's the thing. This team really struggled to run the ball. On the 84-49ers had four Pro Bowlers in that secondary. So I, I don't see any possible way that they would have been able to beat uh, the 84 49ers. So as much as I wanted them on the list, uh, I'm not sure they'd be able to beat the 93 Cowboys because 93 Cowboys had it in their head. They actually beat them in uh, the 93 Packers. 93 Packers won as good as the 96 Packers. Uh, that's another thing you have to consider, but I don't see it, see a way that either one of these teams have been able to beat the 84 49ers. Two other teams I'm going to touch base on actually three other teams real fast. Um, when I was doing some research, somebody put together a list of great Super Bowl teams of all time. They included the 91 Washington Redskins as the number one team of all time. I don't see this. I'm very sorry. I'm not even going to mention a website. I'm not going to give them advertising for something that I don't see. 14-2 um, and two team, number one in scoring, 30.3 points a game. Number two in defense, 14 uh, points a game. They had Ernest Biner. For those of you who remember, Ernest Biner had the fumble, which uh, cost the 88 Cleveland Browns a chance to go to the Super Bowl. Devastating. So Biner ends up in Washington. Pro Bowl season, 1,048 yards rushing. Also had 34 catches. A really, really good player. Not a Hall of Fame running back. A very good running back. Mark Rippon, NFL MVP, Super Bowl MVP. Not a Hall of Famer. Coach Gibbs, yeah, he's a Hall of Famer. Art Monk Hall of Fame. Now, he's 34. Now, he did have 100 yards receiving in the Super Bowl with Gary Clark. And Gary Clark was a pro bowler. This is phenomenal. Seven, 70 catches, 1,340 yards, 10 touchdowns, deep threat. Art Monk, for those of you who remember, real big guy. Uh, now, he would. you have to understand 6'3", 215. That was almost tight end size back then. Um, did have 100 yards in the game. Is, an, is the only offensive member of the Hall of Fame Skill position-wise, Russ Grimm's in the Hall of Fame. Daryl Green's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Brian Mitchell, not a Pro Bowl returner, but it did return two punts for a touchdown. Really good special teams unit. I I can't really put this team in the list of top 10. I, I don't see what this guy was seeing at all. Uh, this was a really good team, had a really good offense. For those of you who remember, uh, they played against the Buffalo Bills. Thurman Thomas was MVP. He put his helmet I, I, on a particular yard marker, and then the halftime crew moved his helmet. He, he didn't know where his helmet was for the first quarter of the game, so then the Redskins jumped out to an early lead due to some weird guffaw. I have a hard time saying that this is a great team when you win a Super Bowl like that. Here's another thing. They also had the fourth pick in the draft. They choose Desmond Howard, MVP of Super Bowl uh, 35, just five years later. And then they draft this team, and then the team just falls apart completely. Here's a team that had an opportunity for a dynasty. You, had to, you win a Super Bowl. You have the fourth pick in the draft, and, and the Cowboys build a dynasty, not you. Um, and, and, and keep in mind, that was a really weird draft. It was not a good draft. I understand. It, it, do some quick research here. This is the draft that the Colts had picks one and two. Steve Edmond would have been a great player. Injuries destroyed his whole career. I think he started like 20 games or something. Quentin Corriott was just a guy. Sean Gilbert, really good player. Then you have Desmond Howard. But here's the thing. Once you take Terrell Buckley, once you take Troy Vincent, the Kansas City Chiefs at 20 took Dale Carter, and he ended up going to a Pro Bowl's rookie. You could have took any one of these players – Instead, Desmond Howard, maybe you would have been the team in the 90s if the Dallas Cowboys. Should that factor into it? Maybe, maybe not. But when I look at great teams of all time, I, Rippon's not a Hall of Fame quarterback. Uh, this team had some really good players on offense. One Hall of Famer on defense. Two Pro Bowlers on defense. Charles Mann, really underrated player, 11 and a half sacks that season, but not a Hall of Famer, so I don't see it. Uh, two other teams I want to touch base on real fast here. 2013 Seahawks. Uh, some people think they're one of the greatest teams of all time. I don't see it. Uh, led league points against 14.4. Not as good as some of these other defenses I've talked about. The NFL Network 
Uh, originally, when they came out top 10 defenses, they had the Atlanta Falcons of 77, the grid splits at five. They, they took them off the list, substituted say, uh, Seattle in there. I don't, I don't know. The Legion of Boom. Here's, here's the thing with this Legion of Boom defense. Thomas, Chancellor, Sherman all go to Pro Bowl. Sherman and, and Thomas, first team all pro, no other Pro Bowlers. There's some really good players on that defense. None of them made a Pro Bowl. Offense, Unger made a Pro Bowl. Lynch and Wilson made a Pro Bowl. Uh, Tate, I think, is really underrated. Doug Baldwin, really underrated. Neither one of them Pro Bowl. Both of them five touchdown receptions. You know. Uh, now, I want to look at a great defense here. They won their playoff games 23-15, 23-17. Okay, I, I, I can do better. Uh, the 71 Cowboys gave up 18 points in three playoff games. They're not on the list. And that, and that doomsday defense. So maybe, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, the doomsday defense um, also gave up, well, 15.9, but they were ranked uh, uh, seventh. Cowboys 14.4, but they're not as good as several defenses I mentioned on this list. Uh don't get me wrong, Lynch could be in the Hall of Fame. Russell Wilson could be in the Hall of Fame. Ultimately, I think I think Thomas and Sherman could be in the Hall of Fame. I think they will be in the Hall of Fame. Uh, keep in mind, Bobby Wagner, who's MVP, he didn't make the Pro Bowl. He could be in the Hall of Fame. Really, really good player. Wasn't a Pro Bowler for this team. I, I'm, I'm not really sold on this being a great team. I remember they played the Denver Broncos. Denver Broncos snapped the ball over Banning's head for a safety first play of the game. When I watched this game, I saw Denver falling apart. I actually felt bad. I'm a Chiefs fan feeling bad for the Denver Broncos. That's how bad they played. I, keep in mind, they go to the Super Bowl arguably with a better team next year and lose. So I don't see it. Uh, the last game on touch base on 99 Rams, one of the greatest offenses of all time, potentially five Hall of Famers in the Hall of Fame. Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, they will get in someday. You have Orlando Pace, Marshall Falk, Kurt Warner. Average defense game lasts 15 seconds longer. Uh, I think Titans tie it up. Whoever wins coin toss wins. And here's the thing. The Rams offense re really was kind of sporadic. Only scored 23 points. Let's say they win the coin toss. Any guarantee Tennessee doesn't stop them? Because the Rams couldn't stop Tennessee. So I I, I can't even put the, the Rams on there despite having one of the greatest offenses of all time. So thank you very much for get, letting me do this video. This is an honorable mention to several teams that aren't on my top 10 list. But stay tuned as later on in the week I'll reveal the greatest Super Bowl team, the number one Super Bowl team of all time. Thank you for watching this video. All your wildest dreams are going to come true. And if you haven't already, there's this button right here. I see this little button. Bam! Hit that button. Become one of the greatest people on planet Earth. And until next time.